Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Na'amadu Allah ta'ala wa naqsafir wa shadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika la Wa nashadu anna sabbina Muhammadin abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh Sallallahu alihi wa ala alihi wa azwajihi wa ashabihi ta'bihi khulafi rajil al-mahadin Min ba'dih wa zirimati ala tahakik خصوصا من هو لما تقول فير رسول الله لا تحقيق أمير المؤمنين حضرة أبو بكر ومر سمن وعلي ولا بقت الصحابة تابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين يا أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون يتقون الله تعالى وترى إنما الذين تقول الذين هم مخسنون الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد ولا آله والصحب يجمعين. All praises are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, the Lord of the worlds. All praises are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى, who is the first, the last, the manifest, the hidden. He who has power and might over everything. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Imam of the Messengers, the Master of the Prophets. The crown of creation, Sayyidina Muhammad and upon his blessed family and noble companions, especially upon the four rightly guided Khalifas, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Al Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last days. O oh believers, welcome to you. Juma Mubarak. We are in the holy day of Juma, in this most holy month of Rabiul Awal, the month of the Prophet ﷺ. We must understand the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in giving us the ability to remember and worship this tremendous day of Juma. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His holy Prophet ﷺ, ﷺ said in Hadith Sharif, 
the best day on which the sun has risen is Friday. On it, Adam salam was created. On it, he was made to enter paradise. And on it, he was expelled from it. And the last hour will take place on no other day than Friday. And Prophet salam is also saying about the day of Juma that it is an Eid for the believers. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu an narrated that the Holy Prophet salam said, We are the last but the foremost on the day of resurrection. Though the former nations were given the revelation before us, and Friday was their day and its celebration was made obligation for them, but they deferred about it. So Allah gave us the guidance for Friday, and all the other people are behind us in this respect. The Jews' holy days is the day after, and the Christians' day is the one after that. And Hujatul Islam, Imam al Ghazali said, the one who gets the blessings of Juma is that believer who looks forward to it anxiously and eagerly. And the most wretched person is that individual who is in ghaflat and doesn't even know which day it is. So inshallah Rahman, we should be awake and show the proper respect to this holy day of Juma because it is honored and respected in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Muslims, we must show respect, honor and love to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown respect, honor and love to. And the most beloved one in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his Habib, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has honored his beloved Prophet above all creation and has praised him throughout the verses of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Holy Prophet in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَإِنَّكَ أَلَّا خُلُقٍ عَزِيمٍ And verily, you are of a tremendous character. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ كَنَا فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ الْأُرْسْوَةٍ حَسَنًا Verily, in the Prophet of Allah, you have the best example. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even bestowing His own divine names upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Saying that the Prophet is Rauf and Rahim. We cannot be Muslims without saying the name of the Prophet. For the shahadat, the statement that a person must make to enter into the fall of Islam is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set a condition upon the faith of an individual that he must show honor and respect to the Prophet in order to submit to the will of Allah. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah, Atiyu Rasul, O Ulul Amri Minkum. Obey Allah, obey the Prophet, and obey your rightly guided leaders. So in order to obey Allah, we must obey the Prophet. This is a divine command. Even more than that, if we claim to love Allah, then we must love and obey His Prophet. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in the Quran Kareem, in Surah Al Imran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, say to them, Ya Muhammad, if you love Allah, then you must obey me. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. So how can we show this proper respect, this proper love, this proper obedience to the Holy Prophet We must run to learn about his life, his mission, his sirah and his legacy. In this month of Rabi'ul Awal, the month of the birth of the Prophet, as believers, we should sit and understand and connect ourselves to the Holy Prophet والسلام, and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and run to learn more about his character, about his mission, and about his seerah. And to better understand the Holy Prophet والسلام, it is important to understand the society that existed in Arabia before he was born. Before the Holy Prophet ﷺ, the Quraysh, the Arabs, indeed the whole world was in a state of jahiliya, ignorance. Before the Holy Prophet ﷺ came into the world, the world was covered in darkness. The Arabs at the time, they used to say, me and my tribe against you and your tribe. Me and my clan against the other clan. This was tribalism. 
This was the level of selfishness and cruelty that existed at that time. The weak in the society, they were oppressed and they had no protection. The slaves, the orphans, and the women, they were cast aside while the rich became richer and the tyrants became more oppressive. Society had become so cold-hearted that the people of that time would bury their newborn daughters. And in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of this cruelty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent His most beloved one, the Habibullah, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And at the time of his birth, so many signs appeared, showing the great mission of the Holy Prophet. Before he was born, a light came out of his mother, Hazrat Amina's womb. They illuminated the palaces in Syria. When he was born, the flame that the fire worshippers had kept burning for thousands of years suddenly was extinguished. When he was born, the idols in the Kaaba all fell down and broke. When he was born, والسلام, the palaces of the tyrannical kings, they crumbled and they were destroyed. These miracles were giving a sign to the whole world about the greatness of our Prophet والسلام, and his mission. Because upon the birth of the Holy Prophet, all the earlier revelations, all the earlier religions, they became bankrupt. And he came as a Hatam al Nubuat, the seal of the messengers. And he brought the complete message of Islam. And with his birth, the palaces of the tyrants they were destroyed because he came to destroy tyranny and cruelty and its place to bring Rahmat and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the heavens to the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the Holy Prophet والسلام, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. And we did not send you except as a mercy for all the universes. And our Holy Prophet والسلام, he is the prophet of mercy. Look at what he did. As soon as he was born, he went into sajda and he said, I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and that I am Rasulullah. Ummati, Ummati, my Ummat. My ummat. From his birth, the Holy Prophet brought mercy, praying for his ummat. And his ummat is not just limited to the Muslims, it is to every human being who lived from his time until the end of times Muslim, Christian, Jew, Hindu, everyone. So, from as soon as he entered this world, Holy Prophet began to spread his mercy. And the mission of the Holy Prophet. It is nothing but to unite the people under La ilaha illallah. The mission of the Holy Prophet is to complete the potential of human beings to become true servants of their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mission of the Holy Prophet is to raise an ummah of mercy because Holy Prophet took those people who were burying their own daughters and transformed them into the most noble human beings who ever walked upon the face of the earth. The Sahaba al Kiram. Because when they gave shahadat, when they submitted to the will of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they followed in obedience completely to the Holy Prophet, والسلام, they reached to peace. Because the shahadat, it brings peace to mankind. It makes a man to understand the reason of his creation and to live for the sake of his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when humans are submitted and living for their Lord, then peace not only enters the hearts of individuals, but communities, nations, and the whole world. So the Holy Prophet said to us, Salam, his message brings mercy and peace to all of the universes. But the tyrants, the cruel ones, they try to suppress and to bring an end to that mercy. When Holy Prophet said to us, Salam, said that the rich must help the poor, that the strong must help the weak, that there was no difference between an Arab and an Ajam except for taqwa. The tyrants and the cruel ones understood that their power was under threat by the message of the Holy Prophet And so they fought against that message. And the Holy Prophet and the Sahabi Kiram, they had to struggle, they had to strive, they had to sacrifice. 
in order to keep that message of mercy alive so that it could reach to us. The powerful leaders of the Quraysh, they hated the message of Islam so much that they put a ban on the Holy Prophet والسلام, and his followers. They said that no one from the Quraysh could buy, sell, help or even speak with the Holy Prophet and his followers. They said he founded a cult. So Rasulullah and the Sahabi Kiram, they had to leave their homes and live on the outskirts of Mecca. One of the Sahabi said that they were so hungry that they would eat pieces of dried up leather that they could find on the ground. And the Sahabi Kiram, they were so starving, they were starving so badly that they began to tie big rocks to their stomachs to lessen their hunger. So they went to the Holy Prophet and they showed him their state, showing the rocks tied to their stomachs and that they had tied these rocks and the Holy Prophet lifted his shirt and showed them that he had tied two rocks to his stomach. So yes, the Holy Prophet ﷺ had to struggle for the message of Islam to bring mercy into the world. Someone once asked the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, was the hardest day of your life, the day of Uhud, when your uncle Hazrat Hamza was martyred and two of your teeth, they were lost in the battle? And Holy Prophet answered, no. The hardest day in my life was the day of Taif because when Holy Prophet went to Taif, he was hoping that his cousins there would give him refuge from the Quraysh and that the message of Islam could spread there. But instead, the leaders of Taif sent small children to stone the Prophet until his shoes became filled with blood. And the angel Jibrail salam, came to the Holy Prophet with the angel of the mountains and said, Ya Rasulullah, with your command, we can crush all of Taif under the mountains. And Holy Prophet والسلام, said, No, Ya Jibril. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses their children to be Muslims and to worship Allah and to worship Allah alone. Even if they have rejected Islam, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses their descendants to become Muslims. Subhanallah. Uh, look at the character, the mercy of our Prophet. So yes, Holy Prophet والسلام, and the followers and his followers, they had to struggle. They suffered in order for the mercy of Islam to reach to us everywhere in the world. That struggle did not end there. The Prophet ﷺ left his mission for us to continue. Because one day when Holy Prophet was approaching old age, he came back to his home from the battle. And his clothes, even his beard, they were all covered in dust. And his beloved daughter, Hazrati Fatima radiallahu anha, said, Oh my beloved father, you should rest. And he said, Ya Fatima, I will not rest. Do you see how the light is entering into this house from that window? I will not rest until the light of Islam enters into every home just like that sun. And she said, Oh my father, what about when you leave this world? He said, There will be those who come after me who will continue my work. Throughout the history of Islam, the true believers, the great scholars, and the great individuals of this Ummat, they strive and struggle to continue the mission of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. And in this day, we should sit and remember his struggle. We should sit and remember the great blessings that the Holy Prophet came with, the Rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To remember, to reflect, and to praise the Holy Prophet. It is a sunnah of our role models, the Sahabi Kiram. The Sahabi Kiram, they were completely drowned in the ocean of loving the Prophet. And there were so many examples in the hadith, in the seerah of the Sahabi, praising that Prophet. The uncle of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, Hazrat Abbas, radiallahu an, wrote a poem saying, When you were born, a light rose over the earth until it illuminated the horizon with its radiance. We are in that illumination and that original light and those paths of guidance 
and thanks to them we pierce through. And Hafez Hassan ibn Sabit, who was the official poet of the Holy Prophet wrote about him saying, My eye has not beheld one more perfect than you, and no woman has ever given birth to one more beautiful than you. You were created free from any defect. Indeed, it is as though you were created in the manner that you wished. So to praise the Holy Prophet, to honor him and to thank him for his birth, to thank Allah for his birth, it is a sunnah of the Sahabi. It is even the sunnah of the Sahabi to jump up and down in praise of the Prophet. The Abyssinian Muslims, they were parading, jumping in the Masjid al-Nabawi, chanting, Muhammadun Abdun Salih, Muhammad is the righteous servant of his Lord. The respect of the Holy Prophet, it did not end when Holy Prophet departed from this earthly realm. One day, the Halif, Halifa Marwan saw a man putting his face on the grave of the Holy Prophet out of respect and kissing it. And the Khalifa, surprised, said to the man, do you know what you are doing? And pulled him aside. And he saw that the man was a great Sahabi, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Hazrat Abu Ayyub said, yes, I know what I am doing. I am visiting the Prophet of Allah and not a stone. Hazrat Bilal al-Habashi, after the Prophet was veiled from this world, he moved to Syria out of sadness because he could not stay in Medina. And one night in his dream, he saw the Prophet come to him and say, Why are you avoiding me, Ya Bilal? So that day, Hazrat Bilal rode his horse non-stop to Medina out of love for the Prophet. And when he arrived, the Prophet's grandsons, Hazrat Hassan and Hussein, pleaded with him to call the Azan one more time. And when Hazrat Bilal called the Azan, all the people of Medina came out believing that the Holy Prophet had returned and Bilal was causing, calling the Azan again. And when Hazrat Bilal reached to Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, because of his intense love and yearning for the Prophet, he could not continue and he lost his consciousness. So these are our examples in the kind of love that we must have for the Holy Prophet And because these people, the Sahabi Kiram obeyed and loved the Prophet, they became beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their love for the Prophet is beyond our imagination. And it is a miracle of this religion that in 1400 years of Islam, this deep love of the Prophet, which brings us to a deep love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has never led anyone to shirk. The Christians through their love of Isa alayhi salam call him a god, but not one person in 1400 years of Islam has ever said that the Prophet is an ilah, an billah. Because we love him as the means, as the guide, as the way, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, seek means to come close to me. Showing love and respect to the Prophet and gathering to show gratitude to Allah for the gift of the Prophet is a way of the Sahaba. There is a hadith recorded in Sunan Nisa'i where Holy Prophet once approached a circle of his companions and asked, what are you doing? And they said, we have come together to pray to Allah and to praise Him for guiding us to His religion and blessing us with you. And Holy Prophet asked, I ask you by Allah, is that the only reason? And they said, Wallahi, we have not come together for any other reason. And Holy Prophet told them, saying, I am not asking you to swear an oath because of any suspicion but because Jibra'il alayhi salam just came to me and told me that Allah Jalla wa ala is boasting of you to his angels right now. Love of the Prophet is to live each moment of our existence in full obedience and submission to the way of Allah because he is the means and he is the leader of the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Mawlana Jaladin Rumi is saying, I am the slave of the Quran as long as I have life and I am the dust on the path of Muhammad the chosen one so what is is to be the dust on the path of the Prophet it is not just words it is action because the proof of love it comes through actions and we want to see that the proof of the love of the Prophet is we look to those stars in the skies for our examples the Sahabi Kiram 
My Sahabi, Prophet said, are like the stars in the sky. If you follow any one of them, you will be rightly guided. Urwa bin Mas'ud al Thaqafi in Sahih Bukhari narrated that one of the non Muslim diplomats, after visiting the Holy Prophet, said, O oh people, by Allah, I have served as a representative to kings. I have been a representative to Caesar, to Kisra, and to the Najashi. By Allah, I have absolutely never seen a king whose people venerate him the way the companions of Muhammad venerate Muhammad He does not spit except that it lands in the hands of one of them who rubs it on his face and his skin. And if he commands them, they race to fulfill his command. If he makes ablutions, they fight with each other for the remains of its water. If they speak, they lower their voices in his presence and they do not gaze at him except intently out of reverence and love for him. This is just a taste for us to understand that these are the stars in the skies that leads us to the Holy Prophet for us to fulfill our shahadat saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. The state of the Ummah Muhammad today, unfortunately, our eyes fill with tears and our hearts break. We see the honored nation of the Prophet has fallen into humiliation and disgrace everywhere. We find that the Muslims are subject to tyranny, despotism and oppression. Our souls, they hurt when we see the condition of our brothers and sisters in the Ummah. Because Rasulullah said in his Hadith Sharif, the believers in their mutual love, mercy and compassion are like one body. If one organ complains, the rest of the body develops a fever. The body of this Ummah is suffering and the answer is simple. We must unite. We must unite. There must be unity. But we find that the Muslims continue to be disunited, continue to divide and separate. How can we find unity? The first step in answering this question is to look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us, commanded to us, saying in Surah Al-Imran, hold fast all together to the rope of Allah and do not become divided. Inshallah Rahman, we will hold all together to the rope of Allah and not divide. Inshallah Rahman, we will then raise this potential of mercy that is inside of us as we are following the Prophet of Mercy and to spread it to the rest of the world. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك كنت من الظالمين سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة تورو سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة تورو سبحان كدوس رب الملائكة تورو إن الله يأمر بالعدل ويحسن تعز القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون فاسكن الله يذكركم واشكرون على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم بما تسنعون إن دينا إن الله الإسلام قام الصلاة Allah 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألم نشرح لك صدرك وضع عليك رزقك الذي أنكر ظهرك ورفع لك ذكرك فإن مع نسي يسرى إن مع نسي يسرى فإذا فردت فانصب إلى ربك فرب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر Thank you. 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 Thank you.